Golfers, if you struggle with greenside bunker play, this is the video for you. Today, Thomas is gonna help you increase your sand saves. Wow, that's good. That is so good. Hey golfers, and welcome back to another edition of Swing Tips here on the Second Swing YouTube channel. Uh, Thomas and Drew here today at Les Bolstad Golf Course, and today specifically we're focused on greenside bunker play, Thomas. Uh, I think a lot of golfers out there struggle with this aspect of their game. They get into a bunker and they kind of panic, and it can really drive up that number on that scorecard. So uh, we've got a few scenarios up our sleeve today, but um, we'll go through the basics here today. Yeah, and I think the most important thing to take away from this video is going to be that not every single bunker shot is the same shot. You don't have to use the same wedge for every single bunker mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, it's every, every single one's different. And so let's, uh, let's go show maybe a few different scenarios out there and have you walk us through and, and maybe go for the learn a thing or two. All right, well, Thomas, shot number one here. Pretty typical bunker shot. Uh, you're about 20 yards-ish to the pin. Uh, nothing crazy in front of you here. So, uh, you know, when you're looking at the standard bunker shot, you're walking up to it, you're checking things out. What do you, what's going through your mind and how do you prepare for that? All right, first picking which club you're gonna use. And for this, it can be sand wedge, it can be lob wedge, it can be whatever the golfer likes to use most out of the sand. It's yeah. a pretty basic shot. But the most important thing is you gotta pick out where you're gonna land this ball and how it's gonna get to the hole. Yep. Um, alignment's key. So when I'm walking in here to hit this shot, I wanna make sure that my club face is aimed at the target. So okay. if I was to draw a line straight down there, the club face would be aimed kind of towards the target. Yeah. My feet and my shoulders are gonna be just a little bit open. Mm -hmm. So naturally, there, and I'm gonna kind of cut across it a little bit, yeah. which is gonna cause the ball to kind of get up and spin a little bit. Sure. Yeah, to hit a basic bunk bunker shot, you just need to be slightly open. You don't need to get crazy with it. Yeah. It's just a straightforward shot, but you gotta make sure you still take the sand. Yep. You're still using the bounce of the club. Yep, for sure. So. And what, is there a rule of thumb now? Because I know, you know, golfers are told different things about hitting the sand first, right? Catching sand. So what is kind of, what would you say is the basics there? Because I, I know you're not hitting the ball first. Right, so. it's definitely not ball first. I'm trying to probably enter the, the sand just before the ball. And if I had like a, a dollar bill, that would be probably much from this point here to this point here. Okay. So it's kind of like just before the ball. Yep. But you've got to use that bounce. And if you open your face up a little bit, it's going to increase the bounce and it's going to cause a little bit of thud on the, yeah. on the ground as you're coming through. Right. Ooh, that was crisp. Spin. Yep. Well, this looks like kind of an awkward yardage for a bunker shot. Yeah, that is. Let's see here. You got 45 yards for you. So this is longer than the typical green side bunker shot. And I see that you have three different wedges in your hand. I do. Uh, I see too many golfers when they're playing just using the same wedge for every single bunker shot. Mm -hmm. Now, a high loft wedge is great for a short bunker shot, yeah. but you, once you start getting some longer bunker shots like this, you pull that 60 degree out, you catch that thing thin, Yeah. that thing's going to go flying over the green, you catch it fat, it may not end up out of the bunker. Right. Well, you don't have to swing as hard if you use your 52, your 56, or even your pitching wedge for a longer bunker shot. Okay, so, and this would be that type of yardage, right, where it's still kind of a greenside bunker shot, but it's it, it's gonna take more than your typical, you know, 10 yard bunker shot. Uh, you got 45 yards, so walk me through your process here in selecting which club you're gonna use. Yeah, so, I mean, 45 yards, first I'm gonna check to see what the lie's like. It looks like this is actually sitting pretty good. I got kind of a clump of sand behind my ball, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to eliminate 60 right off the bat because I know I've got to have to swing this thing pretty hard yep. to get that thing to the hole. Yep. And as I mentioned, if I miss hit this slightly, swing this thing hard, it's over the green yep. and in trouble. So that one's eliminated out of the bat. And then I've got to kind of assess the lie and kind of see, kind of feel it out a little bit here. And I'm actually going to go with a 52. Okay. So I'm actually going to go, because it's 45 yards, I'm still trying to fly it up there. Maybe not trying to fly it all the way to the hole, but I have it kind of release up to the hole a little bit. Yeah. But I'm trying to eliminate a really bad shot here. I'm in trouble. I'm 45 yards away at a bunker right. shot. It's not the easiest bunker shot. So your swing's going to be pretty similar to that of a you know, 15 yard bunker shot, but using your 60. It's going to be a relatively same swing and, and feel. It's just going to be with uh, less loft. Yeah, pretty much. Yep, because the ball is now going to fly it's going to be the same swing as maybe I'm doing a 20 yard bunker shot with my 60 degree. Yeah. Just got less loft on the golf club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So let's try it here. So as I mentioned, this is not normally my, uh, my favorite bunker shot. I don't think this is <laughs> anyone's favorite bunker shot. Nice. All right, well, Thomas, this shot's a little bit different than the last one. Uh, you had a pretty large lip to cover on this one, and it's not as far as the last one either. So uh, walk me through this one and how it's a little bit different. Right, you didn't have to grab your rangefinder to shoot no. how far I got. I actually woke up and just paced out how far I've got. It's about 15, 15 yep. yards away. Um, notice I only grabbed one wedge, yep. my highest lofted wedge. Loft is your friend. Loft is your friend to get the ball up and over the lip. Yep. That is priority number one, getting mm -hmm. the ball out of the bunker. Yep. If I had hit my 52 here, I probably wouldn't get it out of the lip. Right. So, yeah, so I've, one advantage I do have with this shot though, is my ball is still on a little bit of an upslope. So what that does is that turns this club into a little bit more loft. Yeah. So it does help get the ball up in the air. Okay. Yeah, so mention the main goal here when I'm hitting the shot is making sure that I get myself up and over the lip. So I'm gonna try and hit this fairly high. Yep. And make sure I stay out of trouble. Yep, is there anything extra you're doing now, um, like on a shot like this, like out of bunkers, or anything maybe golfers can take note of to really get that ball launched a little bit higher than maybe the average bunker shot? So, speed helps. Yeah. Um, one thing I will mention is because I am on this upslope, it's turning this 60 degree wedge yeah. probably into 65 degrees. Yeah. So because there's more loft on this golf club, I need to swing a little bit harder to get the ball out. Okay. That'll cause spin on the ball, which will cause the ball to go sure. straight up in mm -hmm. here. Well, that might go in. All right, well, Thomas, you found kind of, I think, the cruelest bunker out here at Les Bolstead because you've got probably 60 some yards here and it's a bunker very in play off the tee. And so this kind of gives you a really weird number in because uh, it's not quite a green side shot, but it's, uh, it's kind of a feely bunker shot here. It is. And I measured 64 yards with my range finder. Uh, there's a bunker in between this bunker and the green. Mm -hmm. So I've got to be perfect. Yeah. So I'm actually going to play this as a 64 yard shot. Yeah. But the most important thing is got to make sure my lower body is really stable and still when I'm hitting this shot. Okay. So I didn't bring a longer wedge, so I've got my 56 and 60. I'm actually gonna go, gonna go with the 60. Okay. I'm gonna try and hit that 64 yard shot, which is just a little bit short of nine o'clock for me. And I just gotta keep my lower body nice and stable here and just commit to the shot. So you're hitting the ball first here. You're not doing the greenside bunker deal where you kind of grab some sand first. Right. Uh, you're, you're making sure you get the ball first. It's, it's pretty much ball and, and ground at the same at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not trying to take a lot of sand. I'm just trying to kind of pick it pretty cleanly. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's good. That is so good. All right, well, Thomas, that was four unique bunker scenarios. And I know there's, I mean, every bunker shot's different, like you said at the, at the beginning of the video, but uh, I think there's a, a good bit of information there for golfers to take away and maybe they can use on the golf course when they play. Yeah, and the better you get at being a bunker player, you'll realize actually being in the sand can be fun. Oh, actually yeah. being a lot of fun, you can hit some good shots, you can create some spin, get some backspin, and hit some great bunker shots and get up and down, even hole a couple. And if you become a really good bunker player, you're going to save a lot of shots on the golf course. Yeah, it's going to ease your mind too a little bit. You're going to have more confidence and ultimately, like you said, you're going to shoot lower scores.